Welcome, everyone. I'm going to be speaking today regarding flavorful health, the whole food plant-based nutrition as a tool for reconnecting with yourself and reclaiming wellness. I am going to be featuring global Filipino cuisine from my cookbook called ISOS, Whole Food Plant-Based Global Filipino Cuisine. Quick disclaimer, this presentation is for educational purposes only, and it's not a substitute for therapy or any medical advice. So first, I wanted to ground us all and try to recall what brings you here, whether it's your personal health, your loved one's health, or just a curiosity around whole food, plant-based Filipino food. I am very excited to speak with you today and cover all of these things and see how it will benefit all of these areas for you. So skipping most of this, since Lori already mentioned it in the, in, in the introduction, my name is Claudia Martinez. Um, I think the most important thing here is that I personally use this eating habit to normalize my cholesterol level. And it also helped my family with various, um, various ailments, I'd say. Anything from just aches and pains to blood sugar levels to weight management. This eating habit has helped us in many different areas. I am also an entrepreneur, as mentioned, and my business is actually a catering company. So I've been around food for um, almost 20 years now. Um, so I have familiarity with the nutrition aspect and the practical aspect as well, which led me and my husband to write this cook. What we'll be covering today is understanding what multidimensional nourishment is. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about holistic nutrition. This is the way I have interpreted this, so I'm going to share that with you. What the whole food plant-based eating habit is. How to get started with a whole food plant-based eating habit featuring Filipino foods, and we'll have time for Q&A as well. So. I would like to start by orienting everyone around what it means to be holistic or as I like to refer to it, multidimensional beings. We are all made up of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energies. We see this everywhere, like from Chinese medicine, Indian medicine, Filipino folk medicine, Native American medicine. It's referred to by different things, but all in all, it's it's it it's basically the same, right? So sometimes you'll hear it as earth, air, water, and fire, body, mind, heart, and soul, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual layers. This understanding has been really helpful for me because I came from just the physical plane, basically. I didn't understand how these things work together. But seeing them as a full picture allowed me to give myself more compassion and be able to adopt this eating habit in a deeper way. Because I realized like the food is a physical input, but we also eat, so to speak, different things like information, relationships, and what we perceive our purpose in this life to be. And those things we can continue to do. When we sustain them, for example, in our physical health, we sleep is just one example. We sustain our mental health through like, you know, our beliefs, the information we take in, our spiritual, our emotional health, sorry, um, by cultivating our relationship with ourselves, our spiritual health by communion and like being with other people, kind of like having this feeling of purpose around life. And of course, where there's input, there's also output. With food, when you feel deeply nourished, it feels so natural to move. You feel really good in your body. You feel light and alive, basically. When you're nour nourished with information, it's very easy to translate this into knowledge and sharing it with other people. When you're feeling emotionally nourished, 
you build strong relationships with others, or in Filipino culture, we refer to this as kapwa. And when we have a strong sense of purpose, feel connected to others, we also have this motivation to be of service and share the things that we know. Another important thing to know is when I refer to health, I mean health as in our body's response to input. All of us are healthy. Whether your body's response is to have you know, high cholesterol, high blood sugar, that's a health response. A healthy body response. The response is often judged to be as like unhealthy or not healthy. But I want to reframe that and move that into the category of wellness. Because when you're feeling these aches and pains, having like high blood sugar, high cholesterol, you don't feel well, you feel sick, you feel disconnected. But it is still a health response. You are still healthy. Actually, you're just not feeling very well. So some of these physical signals might be the low energy or fatigue, pain like headaches or nerve pain, blood composition issues such as high sugar or high cholesterol, organ and hormone dysfunction, reproductive issues, a fatty liver, constipation, and many more. So these things are all addressed by a whole food plant-based eating habit. So as we saw in the previous slide, food is a physical input. And what I've learned is it's very typical for us to kind of zoom into our diet for the first, you know, for the first line of defense or the first thing we want to change, what, whatever it is that we're feeling bad about, right? Like for me, I was just feeling very like almost imprisoned in my body. I was feeling very tight. I wasn't, I, did, I had major fatigue. I didn't have good energy levels at all. It's just this general feeling of being trapped almost in my body. So Naturally, I wanted to review what I was eating and go on a quote-unquote diet. But <laughs> I didn't want just like any other diet to like do it for X number of days and stop it. Like I knew that there was something missing with what I was putting into my body, and that was vegetables. I grew up not liking vegetables at all. Um, I grew up with my grandma. So <laughs> Lala's girl, grandma's girl, she never forced anything on us. And that unfortunately included vegetables because she just, you know, trusted us to, to choose what we would want and take care of ourselves. But there's also that missing out for me to be training my taste buds into enjoying vegetables. So for me, that was a key component missing in my adult diet, right? So I was... Hmm, 32 when I started this and as far as vegetables go it was very limited to like potatoes or what a Caesar salad I really did not have the palate to enjoy vegetables so I knew that that was something that I had to incorporate so it's a physical change that I was trying to make so when we're not well it's understandable that we want to make these physical changes. It's something you can see. And I agree, food is very powerful, and that's why I'm here. That's why we're all here. But what happens is we tend to control our physical reality, to convince our mind, like, oh, I'm eating well, so I should feel better. And when I feel better, I'm going to be worthy of my purpose or whatever it is I want to do. Like for me, I wanted it to be more visible, but I couldn't do that because I wasn't feeling well. So I was trying to control that output just by using food. And so I did. <laughs> and it was very successful. I was able to lower my cholesterol in just two months, normalize it, never like spike back because I actually learned how to cook vegetables in a way that I enjoyed. But fast forward to the, 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 the coming year, like, okay, I have this whole food plant-based eating habit. It's going really well. My family and I have been doing it for over a year already. But this was also during the time when things started opening up after COVID. And my work 
load <laughs> started to go back to its old levels, which was very physically demanding as a caterer. And so it became very hard to sustain it all of a sudden. I was back to my old habits, going out for fast food, meat came back into the picture, dairy, etc. So it all, I basically went back to not necessarily zero, but like one out of 10, right? So I learned how to enjoy plants, but it was hard to incorporate it into my life for real, like with the current demands of a full-time workload. So as I explore that, what I learned that is that wellness is a really multidimensional process. It really has to start from the spiritual level, going down to the emotional level, mental and physical. What does that look like? I realized that I had to connect with myself because what led me to that feeling of being you know, stuck in my body, like not recognizing who I was anymore, was I did not rec recognize myself in the mirror. Like I, I speak about this a little bit in the cookbook, actually. I didn't know who I was anymore. So it, I felt very lost. And it's such like a deep thing that you wouldn't really think is connected to food. But for me as an immigrant, it had a very deep connection to food because what I was used to was this Western diet, this American way of eating. I'm used to having mac and cheese and the chicken and the barbecue sauce, but I did not really feel connected to plants. So I decided to explore um, Filipino plant-based foods and I, didn't find a lot of it online. There was a lot of like vegan choices, recipes, but they were not necessarily whole food. So we'll get into that later. But with these whole foods, I was able to feel again, so to speak. And I could create like a good feeling. Because the really cool thing about the whole food, plant-based eating habit, from my experience and like those around me who share their experiences with me, about four days in, you'll start to feel different. You'll start to sense things kind of clearer. And, oh, it kind of makes you believe that I can feel good again. I can feel good again in my body. So then these beliefs start to get cultivated in you, right? And these beliefs start to create your reality. Like I've never felt more peaceful than I do now having this understanding like if i want to make evident a healthy whole food plant-based eating habit it had to come from a very deep source besides just what i wanted like my willpower it had to come from oh this is how i love myself this is how i take care of myself this is how i'm able to connect with others in the way that i want to Going back into the food. So food is super powerful, right? It's actually sort of like a drug, <laughs> like FDA, right? Food and Drug Administration. It's lumped into that. Food is so powerful that it moves your body to getting activated, deactivated, or balanced. Activating foods, for example, are things like refined sugar, caffeine, you know, like the chocolates, things that you grab when you generally feel tired or you don't have any more energy. You grab these things, for example, in the morning. If you have a coffee habit, oh, I want to grab coffee to wake me up. It's likely because you don't, you know, you feel low energy. You need to get adrenalized. The food will wake you up. Same with sugar. So in the past, or sometimes now, like I'm not completely exempt to this, 3 p.m., that, like, that slump, right? You're super tired. What do you want? You want merienda in Filipino, we call it. You want a pastry. It's sweet. You want, like, you know, a chocolate, like a chocolate drink. You want to reactivate your body so that you can con probably continue your, your, um, your work. On the other side, there are foods that are deactivating. These are things like dairy, alcohol, anything with high sodium. So comfort foods is what they're usually referred to as. 
These things we usually grab when we're feeling anxious, unsupported, or need comfort. So for me personally, with a high cholesterol, the problem was a lot of cheese. <laughs> like uh, that's even written in my high school yearbook. Like I love cheese. Like that's the way to my heart, cheese. I used it so much unconsciously to comfort myself, to make myself feel better. After a hard night's work catering, I would drive through McDonald's, grab myself a cheeseburger, and just like devour that. So imagine 10 plus years of catering doing that and what it did for me. So unconsciously too, right? So that was like my deactivating. So anxious from the night, I'll deactivate with food. Now with a whole food plant-based eating habit, these mostly plant foods act as a balancing agent for you. And this is where your inner knowing lives. When we eat, vegetables, whole food plants, fruits, vegetables, even lean meats, actually. It brings you back into this center. You will feel a lot of things. If you're tired, you will still feel tired. If you're anxious, you will still feel anxious because these balancing foods don't necessarily have that sugar rush to bring you up or that high salt content or dairy to bring you down, right? And it becomes difficult for people to sustain it because they are feeling these things. And this is what connects it to that the mental, emotional, and spiritual needs that we may be having we're trying to solve with food and our eating habits. So the magic of whole food plants is that the fiber naturally flushes out the toxins and excess hormones from your system. It contains powerful phytonutrients, including antioxidants, vitamins, and minerals to help cellular regeneration, timed release of nutrients for sustained energy, and supports a grounded state that allows presence of mind for embodied decision-making. I love this artwork here. Of, in Filipino, we call this Welis Tambo. And I've had an artist, Sofia Cope, translate this into vegetables because this is literally what it's doing when you eat it it's sweeping through your body everything that it doesn't need it's like it's like your faithful cleaner <laughs> keeping your body health I mean, healthy and working well so it's a very important component of your daily eating habit we all know that vegetables are healthy. I would bet that your first food was a vegetable. First food that you've given your, your child, if you have any, is a vegetable. Because there's this inner, we all know that this is good for us. I don't think I need to go further on that, but vegetables have everything you need to function well and be as vital as you possibly can. So going into detail about the differences between vegetarian, vegan, plant-based, and whole food plant-based, this is a quick chart that shows you what it is. I was thinking about this recently, and another way to say avoid is low. So I'm not an extremist. I don't believe in 100%. Sometimes you do need it. Sometimes you can, but it doesn't have to. So another word for avoid may be low. So a whole food plant-based eating habit, unlimited fruits and veggies, unlimited beans and legumes, unlimited whole grains, low oil, low processed food, low eggs and dairy, low seafood, low meat and poultry. Contrasting to this is plant-based, just plain plant-based. So a plant-based eating habit, even vegan and vegetarians, they don't have like necessarily limit on oils and processed foods. Um, for example, with the vegans, it's actually a lifestyle for them. It goes beyond food. They they don't do leather shoes, for example. They don't um, eat honey. So anything to do with animals and how they're treated is a no-no for their lifestyle. The vegetarians um, consume eggs and dairy. Back to whole food, plant-based. We're not saying no to any of these things. It, of course, differs for every person and what your 
um, current state of health is and what you're trying to achieve. But we're not, the goal is not to eliminate all of them. The goal is to limit them or get them to a more complementary level to your body. So what does that look like? So it's a very conscious lifestyle choice. So somebody who's like 60% plants it, or 60% whole food plant-based, you'll probably have meat and dairy once a day. Somebody who does 80% plant-based, meat and dairy four times a week. Or someone who's like totally whole food plant-based, you know, 100% all meals per week. So you can change this depending on what you need, what you're trying to achieve, and how your body feels. Does not have to be 100%. So in exploring this, Filipino cuisine was key for me because being in California, I mean, there's a lot of diversity here, but this this is just growing. Like this, um, this eating habit, this these dining options, thankfully, are growing. But I didn't see a lot of Filipino whole food plant based items available, and I didn't want to lose myself, so to speak, because. I'm already away from the Philippines as an immigrant. And I felt like if I changed my eating habit to mostly salads, I would be abandoning who I was. So connecting it with Filipino culture was very important to me, especially not being able to see a lot of resources online during that time. So this illustration is of the Bahay Kubo. Filipinos, most of us, not all, know the nursery rhyme Bahay Kubo. I mean, that's a very, very old nursery rhyme. I, so it could only lead me to believe like this has been the way we've been living. Like pre-colonial times, Filipinos took pride in having fruits and vegetables around their home. We grew our own in the backyard. That's what we would have for dinner. Maybe would have a little bit of seafood or pork or chicken because those are what's, that's what's available. But inherently, a Filipino diet is plant-based. So this is something that our ancestors already knew in their bodies. And you know this in your body, right? Like your cells know it. We just have to remind it so that you can remember. So in getting started... One thing to remember about creating a whole food plant-based menu are the four pillars. So whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, and spices. The protein source for a whole food plant-based eating habit are mostly the beans, the legumes. It doesn't mean that not everything else doesn't have protein. Like you could actually check even like dark chocolate has protein, for example brown rice has protein so there's like a little bit of protein in in most fruits and vegetables but the main source of it are the beans so that's like a very important part of the eating habit that we would want to cultivate and in filipino cuisine you will see this in our mongo and even desserts things like the buko with mongo seeds for example or red bean like the things that we've adopted from mostly chinese cuisine the beans are everywhere. <laughs> so that's something very important to incorporate when you're trying to learn a recipe or create a menu for yourself. Next, I want to emphasize the importance of green leafy vegetables. So if you're starting, besides the beans, that's the next thing that I would highly encourage focusing on. Even just like sautéed gangkong, sautéed spinach, you know, gailan as a side dish for every meal will work wonders and help you feel better. Nuts, seeds, and spices are basically a secret to enjoying a whole food plant-based eating habit because vegetables have this reputation or people would perceive them as being bland. But learning how to use spices is a game changer. So for Filipino foods, we are heavy on ginger, garlic, onion, and like 
familiarizing yourselves with those flavors and kind of feeling at home in them would help you also feel at home in like more fruits and vegetables in your diet because these are like the familiar flavors. So for a pantry and using the four pillars, I've kind of split the fruits and vegetables here. So this is a sample of how my husband and I actually make our grocery list. Um, we don't write things down so heavily anymore these days, but when we were starting, we would have four columns. So whole grains, legumes, fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, spices. And then underneath there is how we would build our shopping list. So what kind of whole grain would we having this week? What kind of bean are we going to have this week? Fruits, vegetables. And the other cool thing about doing it this way is you can get, you can incorporate seasonal fruits and vegetables into the list. Like focus on, focusing on hmm, maybe three, one to three, you can start with one <laughs> if it's overwhelming. But that allows you to have a visual of all the ingredients you'll be using to create a balanced plate. So this will be sent to you for reference after um, after this session. So don't bother like um, copying everything down. But these are just some samples of the categories. And later on, if you have questions regarding details, especially around greens, breads, things like that, please feel free to drop them in the chat. So once your list is done, you have the four pillars moving on to shopping. When you go to the market or the grocery, you want to focus on whole foods. So what does that mean? Whole foods are like the natural appearance or like the natural state of the food. Let's take, for example, so in the book, my example was orange juice. A whole food is like the actual orange. Slightly processed version is orange juice. A highly processed version is a powdered orange juice. So when we say a whole food, we want to go for the actual orange, right? So focus on like the fresh section or the freezer section. And I'll show you later how to read labels to make sure that what you're buying is you know whole food and not mixed with anything else. When you're shopping, also skip highly processed substitutes like engineered meats and sugars. So this is one pitfall I see often. Um, people think, okay, beyond meat, that's something plant-based. So I should be eating that instead of real meat. Not necessarily. <laughs> there are plant-based burgers, for example, that are made of whole foods, but things that are highly processed. And when you read the ingredients, they're not made from like whole food items anymore. I want to skip those things because those, those are just not going to get you to where you need to be if you're trying to feel well from a whole food plant-based eating habit. For many, avoiding added oils and salt is also good. As far as oils, what I recommend is olive oil and avocado oil. For salt, if you must, um, the pink Himalayan sea salt, sea salt, like the Philippine sea salt, is really good. Um, and miso paste. So in the cookbook, you will also see substitutions um, for different pantry items that are common and like a whole food plant-based version. You also want to limit processed sugars to 8 grams per serving in general. So depending again on where you're at, but if you're someone who's just like borderline, like you're not diabetic yet, you know, you don't have, um, you're not on cholesterol medication yet, the processed sugar should be limited to 8 grams per serving um, if you have to. I recommend skipping it altogether or limit, limit, really limiting it because this is one key thing. Even if it's plant-based, it's not a whole food that we want to avoid. As mentioned, the frozen section also has good vegetable options. So not necessarily like it's not quote-unquote fresh, that it's not good. 
So we're going to learn how to read labels so that you don't, you know, you're not limited to just perishable things. <laughs> the next thing is if it's really important to choose plant foods that you're interested in, because if you're just forcing yourself to eat, for example, something, something, even something simple like kale, you're not enjoying it. Like, so what's the point? For me, the connection to Filipino culture who we've seen is to find joy in it. I mean, not just pride, like proud of our our food and our um, our creativity in the kitchen. But for me, I find joy in it. Like, oh, this is so cool, the way that I can use, for example, the tofu for essencing. So there's like some interest and joy woven into it. It makes the experience more creative, more pleasant, and something that you'll most likely keep up. I also suggest trying your local farmer's market for seasonal produce. So in California, pretty, pretty much every city, I would say, has a really good farmer's market to check out. And that's a really good place to find what grows near you. And that's another thing that's, if you can, um, try to support and, and um, prioritize something that's grown locally. So when writing ISOS, it's based from like a Californian availability of things. And I often get the question where is it more important to stay faithful to a recipe? Or for example, like with the Mongo, usually it's with Malongai, but we don't necessarily have that here. So I sub it with spinach or kale. Or is it more important to eat locally and seasonally? So for me, it was about blending it so that it stays true to the spirit of the dish, but I'm also creating a relationship with where I am now, right? Like, oh, these are the Filipino flavors that make me feel at home, that I love, but at the same time, this is what's available around me. So... I'm here to give you the permission slip <laughs> to sub things and the recipes to what's available around you. Because eating locally, as many of us know, is what gives you the vitamins that come from the surroundings that will help your immune system stay strong, right? Like things that are grown locally kind of like live near you, literally, right? Like we're all be living beings here. We're relating to each other. And those ingredients that go into growing those fruits and vegetables are what deeply, deeply nourishes your body, at least from the physical sense, definitely mental, emotional, spiritual, because those are the things that help you prepare for the season, for the everyday. Like one little anecdote is, one winter, I was just eating lemons from my mom's tree. Um, she lives like in Brentwood, like 20 minutes away from me. And that was a season where I did not get sick. Like those lemons were so sour. I would just have them with water every morning. So it was a great natural vitamin C for me. And I felt really good having it. And it's something just so simple available here, right? So highly recommend and encourage seasonal produce. Now, once we're in the supermarket, of course, we cannot avoid packaged foods completely. And they're not all bad, especially these days. There's a lot of um, chefs and suppliers and even like the big companies trying to make their offerings better. So what we want to do is really read the labels, not the front, but the back. Not the nutrition facts, but the ingredients. So the ingredients are going to be the main focus here. For example, this blended stir fry. Like it's frozen vegetables. A lot of people don't really pay mind to them and think that the fresh ones are superior. Not necessarily because, for example, when you read the labels here, it's just organic broccoli, organic carrots, organic green beans, organic onions, organic red bell peppers, organic mushrooms. So there's nothing else included. It's just those vegetables frozen. So that's a great choice. There's no added preservatives right so that's what we're looking for we're looking for whole food ingredients even though it's a packaged good another example are beans 
So preferably, you know, we'll cook beans from scratch in an instant pot, great. But if you are in a time crunch or, for example, you're having them for breakfast, like for me personally, I eat beans for breakfast. Um, the baked beans in the cookbook is one of my breakfast beans in the cookbook is one of my favorite things to have. And for that, for something quick, I would use a canned or packaged bean. I just make sure that, you know, there's nothing funky in there. Sometimes there's sea salt and that's okay. Um, you can just read like the sodium. It's just 85 milligrams. No problem. So if you're not super sensitive to salt, like the high blood pressure is not a big concern for you. Canned beans, no problem. Next things are snack foods. So one example here is hummus. Not necessarily Filipina, right? But like a garlic hummus is really good and like hits that spot, like the garlic flavor. And you can find variants that are fat-free and oil-free so they don't add extra canola oil or any other extenders to it. Those are great choices. But if it's not available, I mean, it, hummus is still great. You can also make your own. Um, or look for versions that use avocado or olive oil. Sauces, so this fat-free marinara sauce. So this is just a supermarket brand, for example, but they understand that some people are avoiding like these added oils, so they are available. You can just read the ingredient list, and you'll notice it's made of still mostly whole foods and spices, so that's a great choice. Um, vegetable stock, like the low-sodium ones. Um, and this is a great example, Engine 2, which is flat strong, and it uses like all vegetables. I don't even think they add sugar, I mean, not sugar, um, salt or sugar in here. So that's a great option. So make sure to read the labels at the back. If you understand everything, see that there are no preservatives, the sodium content is reasonable, then that's a go. It does not have to be fresh. Word of warning um, for my earlier cohorts when I was teaching this is they would get so excited and buy these packaged things like sweeteners, um, even protein powders, uh, some for breakfast because they're plant-based. But this is only marketing. These are not whole foods. And these are not the kinds of vegetables or plants that are recognizable anymore in our body. So these are things that we want to avoid. Just because it says plant-based, again, does not mean it's healthy. Read the label at the back and check the ingredients. Everything in front is just marketing. Avoid all of the meat substitutes. For example, yeah, like Beyond Burgers and Possible Burgers, I do not um, encourage that. There are different brands, though, that are made really with, like, for example, beans. So that's a good option to check out. Um, or like mix of vegetables, or sometimes even quinoa, like a quinoa burger. That would be a better option compared to like a total substitute made of pea protein, for example. Protein shakes. <laughs> this is going to be controversial probably, but this is actually a junk food. So it's a highly processed item. A lot of people use it, like you no know, people who do bodybuilding and go to the gym, they might have different purposes for it. But in a whole food, plant-based eating habit, the protein powders are skipped. What we would use are beans. Because again, beans are our main protein source. In the cookbook, there's also a recipe for a bean smoothie. It's chocolate and it is delicious. It is unsweetened. Just use, well, unsweetened with sugar, but I use um, dates, for example. And that becomes your protein shake. Because it gives you the fiber and the protein that you need actually even more sometimes uh, protein than, than a protein powder. So if you're totally new to this and you're just getting started, I highly recommend logging your meals for one week, write down what you ate, how you're feeling, the circumstances around you. Just doing this alone, you'll help you, you'll notice patterns and the times that you don't want to eat vegetables, why you don't want or you don't feel like it and just note it down simply i'm feeling tired i'm feeling stressed i'm too sleepy i'm too busy For example just observe yourself and it's going to give you so much information off the bat 
And when you're ready, you can adjust your meals very slowly and start with the breakfast. One trick that worked really well for me is, for example, I will start just cutting sugar or added sugars until 12 noon. Past 12 noon, I'm going to allow myself to have it again. Doing that for a week allowed me to build it in. So, for example, 6 a.m. to noon, no added sugars at all. Next week, I'll extend that to 3 p.m. The following, I'll extend it to 6 p.m. So I'm not shocking my body by doing like one whole day of like not giving it something that it was so used to, but I'm doing it in like small increments and giving it time to adjust because shocking the body will just put you in a stress response, right? Like it's going to think you're starving yourself. And after a while, it's just going to store everything in places you don't want and make the situation worse. Not to mention the emotional and mental um, stress that it'll give you, you know, like the judgments that we have for ourselves. So it's really important to do it in small steps. This is a visual look of how people think. So from eating cheeseburgers, you're not going to go through like loving through the days. It just does not work that way. Your palate is used to a certain amount of meat, dairy, sugar. You have to go slowly and gently. Maybe from cheeseburger, you're going to sub it to a veggie burger. Or from a cheeseburger, you're going to go with a pasta that has a lot more, you know, broccoli, spinach. Or you'll do like a veggie stir fry, brown rice. So it's it's this journey of small steps. It's not just going to be one big leap and there there your whole food plant based, right? It it takes time. It takes self compassion. It takes some self love. And if it feels overwhelming, cut it down. Like so, if three hour increments of skipping sugar or dairy is hard. Try an hour or even 30 minutes. So a little goes a long way. It really does add up if you're patient with yourself. So here are samples from the cookbook that um, we made and really hits that Filipino flavor. Breakfast beans were something I love and I still eat up to now. Like I don't get tired of it. Mongo is my main comfort food. Gailan with tempeh. And of course, salabat. Like it's... The ginger tea is super healing, immune boosting. And it's like one of the gestures. Very simple things that we have um, from Filipino cuisine that it's easy to incorporate anywhere you are in the world, basically, and give you so many health benefits. So maybe we can attempt to create our own recipes. And for those who want some suggestions to start with breakfast, please feel free to drop in the chat what you currently have. And I can offer some suggestions to kind of like do a small step for you. Lastly, I want to say that whole food plant-based eating is a skill and it doesn't have to be 100% ever or forever, right? This is just a tool to help you connect with yourself and feel well again. Allow this practice to reveal the unseen. If you're trying to eat vegetables but it's hard, you'll realize why, right? Like, I'm feeling tired. Why am I tired? So there's like this whole exploration underneath it that really helps you to connect with yourself. It's not always easy, but it's super worth it. The focus is on building a secure relationship with food. We're not going to be scared of meat. We're not going to be scared of dairy. We're not going to be scared of sugar. But we're going to find out why our body is craving it, right? Are we trying to adrenalize ourselves? Are we trying to soothe ourselves? It's just basically understanding where you are coming from as a person so that you can cultivate a secure relationship with food and yourself. Well, thank you so much for listening and being here. I'm looking forward to answering your questions and handing it over to Lori. Thank you so much, uh, Claudia. We have a question for you. Um from Crescenta, uh, raw vegetables versus cooked. Is there a nutritional difference? Sometimes. So there are things like, for example, tomatoes, like we know this, right? That cooking releases the phytonutrients within it. 
but it's not necessarily bad to consume them raw either. They're just different. So I would encourage in this case to just eat what you enjoy. For example, with me, it was very hard to start with raw vegetables. I preferred to eat cooked ones because growing up Filipino, <laughs> we don't have a lot of raw things. Like we like cooking things, warm things. So it's easier for me to start that way. So I would encourage you to choose the recipes that you're interested in and that you feel excited about, whether it's cooked or raw. Thank you. Um, we have a guest from Phil, uh, from the Philippines, uh, from Manila. She said, thank you for this very insightful presentation. Um, and we have uh, Lalita, she shared with us um, what she eat for breakfast. Uh, she wrote oatmeal with eggs, turmeric powder, ground black pepper, coconut oil for breakfast, and also beans. This sounds great. <laughs> mm. I, no notes. Um, it depends if you have, you know, other specific goals. Like the thing with oatmeal, though, what I would check is if the oatmeal you're using has added sugars or flavorings, I would switch it. Try steel cut the whole grain oats instead because oatmeal is one of those things that are readily, readily available, but it's been you know, there's so many versions of it. So I would just double check that the oatmeal you're using does not have any added sugars, oils, or flavorings. Um, other than that, you know, turmeric powder, ground black pepper, coconut oil, and adding beans is a great um, tool to pack it with even more protein. Question from Deborah. Do you recommend monk fruit? I saw that you listed it under warning processed food. I heard that it's fine to use for sweetener. Yes, this is a great question. But yes, it's fine. So it depends on where you're coming from. Like I would think in context of someone who's um, high blood sugar or sugar is a concern. Monk fruit is fine, but the thing with these kinds of sweeteners is it still makes you crave the sugar. So it doesn't help address the root cause, right? So sugar, we use it to adrenalize us. So if you're finding that need for this sweetness, I would maybe encourage, if you're already using it, to lessen the amount that you're putting in. If you're doing you know, a teaspoon, maybe do half, and then taper it down. Because you'll help your, your taste buds adjust because once you start living like with the lower sugar, like lower added sugars, you'll enjoy fruits, nuts, spice in like a whole other level. Like for me, cashews, for example, are already very sweet. So this is, so it's tricky, right? Are we using the sweetener because we're just used to that flavor? Then maybe we can explore what's underneath that and why we're using it. In first place. Yes. I hope that Heidi said she likes gluten free oatmeal. And Alita said that she has rolled oats now, but she was switched to steel cut. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and Mary said, I like the flavor of coconut. It's coconut and coconut oil unhealthy. Okay. So the thing surround, that surrounds coconut is usually the saturated fat. And from what I've learned, most of, most, of, most of the time, the whole food plant-based experts, the doctors, they don't recommend this for people who are dealing with heart issues. So if a heart issue is not something that you're worrying about or concerned about, coconut and coconut oil are perfectly fine to use. But if heart issues are something that you are concerned about, I would skip this. Um, and if you must, just very low amount, right? Like instead of, Totally no, because I know that sometimes hard. We just want to limit it and lower the amount. Okay, Rosalinda wrote, uh, for fresh avocados, how many can we eat for a meal? Okay, so avocado is a great source of healthy fat. It is considered a fruit. So the ideal way to consume it if you are dealing with sugar um, is 
after the savory stuff first. So kind of like a dessert. You want to have it in the end or like paired with um, more greens and even grains like whole wheat or brown rice, for example, because we want we want the higher sugar stuff, even if they're whole food, to come at the end so that the release of sugar into our bloodstream is tiny right? versus just spiking it up. So there's no really limit on how many you can eat, but the order that you do eat them in does make a difference. And I would encourage you to eat that last. I don't see another question in the chat that Parker just wrote. This is very insightful. Thanks so much. Uh, also, um, Rosalinda said thank you. Welcome. Okay, if you have other questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. Lalita wrote rest slides. Oh, <laughs> great slides. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate everyone coming and listening and participating. Um, you can, I can also be reached by my website and you can ask questions too. How do you... Okay. Yeah. Great question, right? Because we don't live in a bubble. We want to go out and enjoy life. Um, try dealing I should read the question out loud. Right? The question is, uh, how do you deal with going to a Filipino party where there isn't any whole food? Yeah. So we still want to enjoy. We still want to go to the party. What I would say is like one meal is not going to hurt you because there are things, again, that we consume beyond food, right? Like when you go to a party, you're there for the connection. You're there for like almost a spiritual experience. Of being with your family and your loved ones enjoy the food you can always go for the vegetable heavy foods first for example and then just have like you know small portion of the meats um and try to stick to the leaner ones also right when when i say a low portion it's technically four ounces or less so you know you've seen that trick like your palm or like half of that and then fill the rest of your plate with the veggie heavy items first. Okay, question from Mary. Fish sauce, it's common in Filipino food. Do you have a recommendation for a substitute? Yes, I do. So there is a recipe in ISOS for um, plant-based fish sauce or a new name I heard for it is called sea sauce because it's still made of kombu, um, like basically a seaweed and miso to have that umami flavor. But I also would not stress out about subbing fish sauce. Um, I know this is a salty condiment, but if used just, you know, as, as a flavor enhancer in your cooking, it's not a do or die thing. It's not, it's not gonna make or break a whole food plant-based eating habit. The most important thing is really incorporating a lot more green leafy vegetables and cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, things like that, and beans. So beans have the protein and the sol soluble fiber, while the dark leafy greens have your um, insoluble fiber. So adding is more important than subbing, except for the case of sugar. <laughs> I highly recommend kind of focusing on that or making that one of the priorities. Okay, I don't see another questions in the chat. Um, oh, uh, let's see, Carlos wrote, I just have to ask, is there a difference between frozen and fresh vegetables as nutrients go? Because I buy almost frozen everything uh, from Costco. Yes, so nothing wrong with frozen at all. Um, any nutrient differences are minimal so don't let that stop you from eating vegetables um there is a slide with examples of ingredient labels so just make sure that there are no preservatives salts or any other ingredients added to the frozen veggies if it's just 
you know, straight up uh, frozen spinach, for example, great. Don't let that stop you. If that's what's accessible, easy to have, and manageable for you, there's nothing wrong with frozen vegetables at all. Thank you. Okay, Mary Road, thank you so much. Where can we find your cookbook? So okay. I'm going to put the, you can answer the question, but I'll also yes. put it in um, the chat, the link to the, um, the book record from the library. library. San Francisco <laughs> Library, or it may also be purchased by my website, claudiamartinez.com. Ooh, soy sauce substitute, I see a question too. Um, you mentioned a uh, substitute for soy sauce. What is it? Yes, um, coconut aminos is a good substitute for soy sauce. So this is actually a Philippine source product. Um, and it's a great option to have uh, something a low sodium soy sauce. I have that at home. I didn't know that it's Filipino. <laughs> yeah, great. You can use that to like, um, when you saute your vegetables, a little bit of that. Delicious. I will put your um, website in the chat so you guys can click on the link to get the book if you want. And I, let me see if I missed any question. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, we answer all the question. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia. Um, so uh, really appreciate you taking the time to share with us the vibrant world of Filipino plant-based cuisine, its health benefits, as well as the creative process behind your cookbook. I also want to thank uh, all of you for joining the program. I hope you will explore Filipino plant-based cuisine further, find joy, and uh, try out some of the recipes from uh, Claudia's cookbook. I will send out an evaluation survey uh, together with the recording link and Claudia's presentation slides. Uh, please give us your feedback so we can continue to improve. And I just saw um, some question. Nick's presentation. <laughs> we we don't have um, a, 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 a second uh, presentation uh, set up yet, but check our um, library event calendar often. And also you can email us, uh, email to beside tag at SFPL. Um, uh, yeah, and then we, we can um, uh, tell you uh, when our uh, next um, uh, cooking event or other uh, health event uh, will take place. And I see your uh, Lolita's recommendation uh, to do a cooking lesson. Thank you. Uh, oh, another comment, question. Okay, do you have cooking demonstrate? Oh, okay, if you have cooking demonstration, it would be good. Okay, thank you for your suggestion, uh, Deborah. And and as I mentioned, uh, I'll be sending out evaluation survey, so you can put all these suggestions in that survey. Um, thank you so much. Um, I hope everyone have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye now. Bye.